everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley Elise. This week I wanted to talk about 15 things um, that we purchased or that were gifted to us for our baby Novali um, who was born back in August. So she's about um, a month and a half currently um, that we just don't feel like were necessary or items we have not yet used. I want to start off this video by saying that any of the gifts that were purchased for us, we are not ungrateful for them. Um, really this video is just to kind of act as a guide for other um, maybe new parents or even just parents in general wanting to know thoughts and opinions on different items. Um, there were quite a few items um, that I'm going to go through today that we have not used at all. Um, some items that just didn't work for us, different things like that. So these are my personal opinions. It has um, nothing necessarily to do with the different brands that I'm going to be talking about, um, but these are just different items that we personally didn't use for our child. Some of them, like I said, um, are just not well suited for us. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this video, but I wanted to start off by saying that we are grateful for everything that we received from our baby shower, all of the gifts and items. Um, so if there was something in here that we were gifted, um, it's not that we were ungrateful for that. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into the 15 items. Okay, so item number one um, is actually our Baby Trend Pack and Play. Um, I do not have that item sitting over here next to me currently. Um, I did not want to bring that big bulky thing in here. We do have it set up currently in her nursery area. Um, but I will put up a picture in here and as well as how much we paid for it. Um, but that is something I would not necessarily recommend getting um, probably until they're a little bit older. I do think we will use it once she gets older. But currently, Lily's back there playing. <laughs> crazy puppy. Are you a crazy puppy? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so we have not used it since she's been born. Um, our pack and play actually is a little bit more than just a pack and play. It came with like a diaper changing table, a bassinet, um, and then the actual pack and play itself and kind of like a little area for the infant to sleep in um, that's not a bassinet. <laughs> um, but we, like I said, haven't used it since she's been born, since she's been home. She does not really like to lay free currently. Um, as I've said in many other videos, she really likes to be swaddled and wrapped up, so that's how she sleeps best. And the pack and play is currently out in her nursery area, not in our bedroom. We have a crib in our bedroom. Because of that, we haven't had any use for it as of up to this point. However, I do think that is something we'll be using in the future. So again, maybe hold off on purchasing that item until they're a little bit older or until you've, like, you may have the need to travel a lot or your child may be in daycare. I'm a stay-at-home mom currently. And because of that, we really don't have any use for it. We don't do a lot of traveling or anything like that. So that's just our personal opinion on that. The next item is going to be a boppy. Now, a lot of parents, um, as you can see, we still have it in the wrapping and everything. This is the newborn boppy. Um, and we have not used this once since she's been born. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we have a nursing pillow that I showed in my last video um, last Monday that we use kind of as a boppy lounger. So... Um, because of that, we haven't had any use for that currently. I don't think it's a necessity. Um, it may be something that's kind of nice. We may end up using it still. I don't know. Just up to this point, we haven't opened it yet. Next item is our Graco 2-in-1 Swing. Now, this one um, is a little interesting. Again, I didn't bring it in here. It's really big and bulky. So, uh, I will pop up a picture in here. This item we have not used for one reason. One, I think it's super convenient, 100%. I think it's great that it's a two-in-one. It saves on space. However, when I purchased this for her nursery area, I really thought we were going to get a ton of use out of it. But the actual... The actual swing itself doesn't have any head support in it and it sits more, so instead of like being a little more laid back with like a slight tilt up, this swing sits more upright like that and there's nothing to go around the baby's head to hold the baby's head in place. 
because of that, she doesn't have strong enough neck muscles right now to be able to hold her own head in place. And so I don't think we're really going to get any use out of that swing up until the point where she really has some good neck muscle and neck control. At that point, we may actually be able to use it. But up to this point, we have not. We've actually been using our Fisher Price swing that I mentioned in the last video, which was a much, much better fit for her. So that is something I would caution you on when you're choosing a swing for your new baby is to really look at the actual details, not necessarily going for what's cute, what's most convenient, just really looking into the details um, and, you know, keeping in mind price and things like that. I think things that are a little bit more on the pricey side, you're going to get a better product. Just the thought. Next item is the Hakka or an off-brand um, like what I got. I can't remember the exact name of this, um, but we purchased ours off of Amazon. And I have not once used this currently. That's probably because I don't really do, um, if we're out and about, I don't pump while I'm out and about. Um, I don't have a, uh, what's the word, portable breast pump. If I did, I might use this more. And I also don't like breastfeed from the breast. And because of that, I don't think I have any purpose or need for this right now. Um, this is what it looks like. Let me block my face so it'll focus in, hopefully. Um, I think it's super convenient and it's a really great idea, especially for working moms or moms who are nursing from the breast. Because I strictly use a breast pump, I don't really have the need for this because it's a double breast pump. Maybe if you had a single breast pump, this would come in handy. Um, but I would, you know really think about that before making that purchase. Next item, bottle warmer. Now this was gifted to us um, by my mother-in-law who was so super sweet and we really really appreciate it. This I think we would absolutely use if it worked with the amount of breast milk that I have in my breast milk containers. This is for I think it's like eight ounces or more in order for this to work and because of that we can't use it because all of her breast milk containers um, are five ounces or less currently. We might be able to use this as she gets older, I'm not really sure, but that's something again I would really caution you guys on when we selected ours on Amazon, I didn't really know what to look for and so I would really caution you to be able to um, pay attention to the details because if you look in those details and it tells you, you know, for eight ounces or more then you know, okay, if I'm feeding my baby eight ounces, then I can use this bottle warmer. Otherwise, I won't be able to use it. That's a problem we ran into with this. I think we would 100% be using this if we could. It's just not an option for us, so we just heat all of our bottles in um, warm water. So, not necessarily, again, has nothing to do with the brand. It's not necessarily the product. It's just the fact that I didn't pay attention to the details when I was putting this on our registry. So now we have a bottle warmer that we can't use, which is a bummer, but you live and learn, which is why you should watch videos like this and get tips and pointers and details and all of that. Moving forward, the next item is going to be interesting. So the next item I have are bibs. Now, here's the reason I say that this is a product that I don't necessarily think you need and was kind of a waste for us. We got bibs of all different sizes. Um, however, we didn't get a new newborn, but I ended up going back to the store and purchasing newborns because Novalee's neck, I guess, is not very big. I don't know if it's just my child or if other people's children are this way. I would love for you guys to leave down in the comments below if you guys ran into this issue as well. But when we were trying to use bibs for feeding because she really tends to um, lose a lot of milk whenever she was feeding at first before we got her reflux under control, um... So we were trying to put these on her to catch that milk. However, her neck was, I guess, small enough that it, all the milk just went through onto her neck anyway, and the bib didn't catch any of the milk. So I don't know, again, if that's just a problem because she was small or if other people have issues with that as well. I'm sure that she will be using those as she gets older and she starts to consume actual food. But as of right now, I think it was a waste of money. I think we could have definitely held off on that purchase until she was a bit older. Again, personal opinion, but leave your comments down below. I'm really curious to see if anybody else ran into that issue with their child. So, that's that. 
This next one, um, again, is too large to be able to bring in here and show you guys, but I am going to put up a picture here so you guys have an idea of what I'm talking about. But when I first found out I was pregnant, I went through Pinterest and looked up some different ideas for a closet for her because she doesn't have an actual nursery. Um, you guys can watch my nursery tour video to see what I'm talking about necessarily as far as um, an actual nursery. But because she doesn't have an actual nursery, there's not an actual closet for us to put all of her clothing in. And I didn't want to do a dresser. However, I am regretting that idea because I had this great Pinterest idea, um, which I think could potentially have worked, but that it's just not my reality. Anyway, so this is a picture of it, like I said, and it's basically a bookshelf that um, we had purchased off of Amazon and I just put rods in to hang her clothes on. Great idea, great way to save on space. You can see all the clothes, it's really awesome. However, the problem that I ran into with that idea is that she goes through clothing so much. We are constantly doing loads of clothes in the washer because she spits up a lot. Um, or you know, she'll have a blowout or she'll pee on herself or whatever. Because of that, and we're us doing laundry so often, I don't even really get a chance to hang everything up. One, I don't have the time for it. And two, I guess I'm just lazy and I don't see the point in hanging all of those clothes up on hangers, which is a tedious task in itself, and then having to go right back through and pull everything off because she spit up on herself or whatever and I'm needing to change her again. Like I said, great idea in theory. However, not the best idea. So. If you're one of those OCD people, I would strongly encourage you to really think about your process um, and what you're really wanting to do. I thought that was going to be a great idea. I am super OCD and a perfectionist, but as a new mom, I just don't have the time to go through and hang up all of her clothing items and then take them all out, you know, put her in them, have her throw up on them, spit up, pee, whatever, and then have to go through and do it all over again. So. I caution you against that. Maybe um, a different idea like a dresser would be a better idea. I'm not really sure. Uh, extra bottles is the next item. Now the reason I say this is I went a little bit overboard being a new mom. I didn't really know what I was doing. I got really wrapped up in oh my gosh this is so cute my baby needs this and I made a lot of purchases that way uh, and I wish I hadn't that item of extra bottles is a great point. I got these really cute Mickey Mouse ones. They're a lot bigger. However, she's not eating enough milk to really be able to need that right now. She's also doing breast milk. Um, maybe if your child is not breastfeeding or you, know, you just wanna have some different options, I think having different nipples is a great idea different types of bottles because you never know what kind of bottle your baby's gonna take to and what's gonna be the best option for them. So that's something to keep in mind. However, don't necessarily go for, oh my gosh, this is such a cute pattern. My baby needs this. Cause then you're gonna end up with a million different bottles. I would also, also caution you to only get one of each type of bottle as far as like different brands and different nipples and things go because you, again, don't know what your baby is going to take to. You don't know if they're going to be picky. Um, so that's all stuff to keep in mind. Wubbanubs. Now this may be controversial because I've heard both ways that some parents are like, oh my gosh, love it, must have. Other parents are like, eh, not a must have, don't like it for whatever reason. Now my reason for including it in this video is that it, not necessarily that I don't like them. I think they're super cute. For those of you who don't know what a Wubbanub is, it's just this little soothie, like these green little um, pacifiers that you would get from like Phillips Avon or from your hospital or whatever, but they're attached to a stuffed animal. And the stuffed animal is super cute. It's supposed to kind of like weigh it down um, so that the baby doesn't necessarily spit it out all the time. Great idea, super, super cute. And this may, again, work for some children, and for others, it may not. For mine, it does not, and here's why. She is very hands-on. She loves to grab things already. 
She's a big fan of grabbing and pulling and it's very hard to keep a pacifier of any type in her mouth because she's always grabbing and moving her hands. Now, adding a stuffed animal onto a pacifier that isn't just a pacifier makes it even more of an issue. She pulls it out even more because now she has something to grab onto. So, I again love Wobonos. I think they're so cute and I think it's a great idea. She may be able to use these types of pacifiers in the future, but as of right now, she cannot. So, um, I am curious your guys' thoughts on Wobonos as well because I want to know if any other parents' kids do that as well or if it's maybe just mine or you know, thoughts and opinions. So feel free to leave that down in the comments below. Next item are these infant head inserts that you're supposed to put into your car seat and it's supposed to keep the baby's head from rolling around. Now, the reason I'm including this in my video, our car seat and stroller combo did come with built-in infant inserts to hold the baby's head. However, when we first brought her home, um, she was much smaller than she is now and because of that the insert didn't fit so I thought okay it's the size of it let me go and get another one because her head kept falling down or to the side enough that I was kind of concerned about her airway so I get on line and I look for more I order more I've ordered a few different kinds I've gotten from different stores different brands these do not work in my opinion maybe other people have had other you know, experiences with them. Maybe I'm using it wrong. I don't know, but it has been so frustrating for me because we've tried so many different ways to try and get her head from falling down without putting something in there that could block her airway or car or cause more harm. So, if you guys have suggestions, please be feel. Uh, excuse me. Please feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Am I using it wrong? Is, am I just getting the wrong product? I'm not really sure. We've tried, I know, I know this one looks bigger, so don't worry. I've tried smaller ones that are more meant for like brand new newborns and none of them are working. I have one other option that I'm gonna be trying from Amazon that's supposed to be a little more like shaped like that to really help hold the baby's head up and to keep it from going to the side too much. We're gonna see how that goes and I can absolutely let you guys know if that's something you're interested in. But like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, leave it down in the comments below if there's a different product you guys have personally found that was a little bit um, a better option for your child. Portable soother. Now, I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh, it's the cutest thing ever. I am going to 100% want to have one of these to hang on the stroller, to hang on the car seat, wherever we go, to really help. Obviously, as you can tell, this product has not even been opened. It was a super thoughtful gift, which we are really grateful for. However, up to this point, we have not used it. So, I don't think it's a must-have. I don't think it's something that you can't live without for your newborn. I think they're super cute and I do think that at some point in the future we may be using it but right now Novali does not really mind being in the car seat so much and she really likes to hear music playing so we just have the radio turned up while we're driving and that's good enough for her. She doesn't really need a whole lot. She's not very picky. She's a very solid sound sleeper so we don't have to worry about little noises and things like that waking her up. Um, so that may be something to pass on or maybe something you may want to get as they're older you know and this again this may work for your child maybe your child is not a deep sleeper and every little sound wakes them up or maybe they hate car rides and you need something to kind of help soothe them the music doesn't work I'm not really sure but that's our personal um, experience with the soothers is that we just haven't needed one up to this point Will we need one in the future? Quite possibly, but I think since she likes music so much now, I'm hoping that that will be something that she continues throughout her life and we won't necessarily need that. Item number 12 is this head thermometer. Again, we got this as a gift, which we're super grateful for. Um, however, this we have not once opened yet because our pediatrician said that using 
the thermometers that go under their underarm is a better option because it's a more accurate reading. So we have not used this yet. I don't know if we will, so we're gonna hold on to it, but maybe I would caution you against purchasing one of these items. They aren't necessarily very cheap. Um, we did put it on our registry and we got it as a gift, so we didn't have to pay for it, but that's kind of something I would talk with your pediatrician about and see what they recommend. Now that leads me into our next item, which is the pacifier thermometer, which I thought, oh my gosh, this is such a great idea. I love it. It's gonna be so easy to check our temperature, no problems. As you can see, we also have not opened this one. Also because our pediatrician said it's not the most accurate method of taking their temperature. Most accurate method is under the arm. And so ever since we brought in her home, if we felt like we needed to check her temperature because she might have a fever, we've done it with just the thermometer that can go under the arm. So take that as you will. Item number 14, and this again may be controversial, are swaddles. Now here's the reason I say swaddles are not worth the money. One, because my child, even though she loves to be swaddled, she is wiggly and squirmy, and we have tried swaddling her multiple different ways. I've done it, my husband's done it, um, and it just doesn't work for her. She can squirm her way out of any blanket swaddle. The only swaddle that we have found that she cannot get out of and that actually holds her in place and is nice and snug and that she can sleep in is the Halo Sleep Sack. That I listed in my last video, which are the items that I felt like were must-haves. So be sure to go and watch that video after this if you're interested. Um, anyway, that's why I think swaddles are kind of a waste of money. If your baby's not much of a squirmer, it may be a good investment, but we got so many swaddles for her um, at the baby shower, and we just haven't been able to use any of them. We've used some of them as like a light blanket during the summer, like this last little bit of summer that we've had left, and we've also used it as kind of like burp rags. You could probably also use it as you know, maybe like a blanket to lay down the floor for tummy time, things like that. But like I said, as far as swaddles go for actual swaddling, I don't think they're worth the money. Last but not least, item number 15. This one is going to be more for nursing moms. Now, <laughs> nursing pads. These are not disposable. These are the rewashable ones, which I know are supposed to be great for the environment. And you know, oh, it's just gonna save you so much time and money and blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. I don't love these. I did try them and I would not recommend them. And here's why. One, when I first brought Nova Lee home and my nipples were really sore, they were cracked and bleeding, my nipples, and this may be TMI, so if you're, you know, if this bothers you, plug your ears. My nipples were actually sticking to the, mater the material. And then they would scab and they would stick to the material. So then every time I was having to pump and I was pulling my bra down to do so, it would pull those scabs and just completely reopen them all over again. Now, it may just be my personal experience, but I did not have that same experience with my disposable nursing pads. Maybe it's because I was changing them more often. I don't really know. I don't know at all, to be honest. However, I would highly recommend the disposable, not only because of that reason, but also because of just the convenience of it. If you're out and about and you need to change your nursing pads, instead of having to put them into something and then wash them when you get home later, you literally just throw it away and put in a new one. Super easy. I think it's more of a time saver than having to wash these constantly. And also, unless you're one of those people that does like a load of laundry every single day or maybe even multiple times a day, this isn't a great option because you're gonna have to wash these once you've used them. And like me, I usually do laundry once a week other than Novalee's laundry and that is still not on a daily basis. It's on occasion. So it may be, you know, three, four days and then I need to do a load of laundry for her. Now, if I throw it in with that, that's great, but there's only... I think there's only two sets in this, so you'd have to really get quite a few different sets if you're going to be doing laundry that infrequently. 
So those are my 15 items that I would highly um, recommend avoiding purchasing up until maybe babies are a little bit older or just avoid purchasing in general. Take it as you will. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's my personal opinion. It's what I've found for me and my child that may not necessarily um, coincide with what you have found for you and yours. So just take it with a grain of salt you know, get some different opinions, do your own research, and really look into things before you purchase them. And don't get caught up in needing everything because I personally believe you really need so few items when you first bring a baby home. And I think the industry has really hyped up how much, oh, you need this, you need this, you need this. You really don't need as much as you think you do. I really thought when I, was bring, when I got pregnant, oh my gosh, I need all of these things. And there are so many items that we just haven't used and we may never use. So I would really caution you just be really smart, really think on what you wanna put on your registry, what you wanna purchase yourself. Overall, just really think hard and really look into the details and things like that so you don't end up purchasing items like I did, like our bottle warmer, that you can only heat up eight ounces of milk in and nothing less, so. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did or you just found it entertaining, please be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Also be sure to subscribe while you're down there. It's a big red button with white letters. You can't miss it. It is free for you guys. You don't have to pay anything to subscribe, um, but be sure to subscribe below because we want you to join the family and turn on the little notification bell down there as well because every time I upload a video, it will notify you so that you guys can come and check out what we've recently posted. I post a new video every Monday at 12 p.m. Mountain Time, so that will let you guys know when that's coming. Also, be sure to head over to my Instagram account, which is at Ashley underscore Elise 19, because I post updates on there. I also post when new videos are gonna be coming out and hints and things like that. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Be sure to leave your comments down below, like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye.